Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What are you doing here? I am in captivity. What for? I find it difficult to answer this question. I was captured. I don't even know how to answer. Got captured? I was captured. I got lost between positions. I got a concussion and got lost. Introduce yourself. Selostin Sergei Sergeevich. Say your date of birth. The 24th of April, the 91st year. 91st year. How old are you? 31. City of birth. Fashevka village, Antrotsatovsky district, Luhansk region, actually lived in Alkesk. Name the military rank and position. Rank. Private. Baker. Supply platoon. Regiment 204. 5th Battalion. Do you voluntarily consent to the recording and publication of this conversation? What does it mean? I'll explain, we'll talk to you now if you want to, but if you don't want to, we won't talk. We will talk. We will talk. I give my consent. You can opt out. Do not give consent, and then our entire conversation will not be published anywhere. I give my consent. Think about whether you need visibility, publicity, and proof that you are alive. Of course it is necessary, so close people will at least know that I am alive, otherwise how will they know? What will it give you? Peace of mind, because my relatives know that at least I'm alive. Okay, let's see what else you can get. Maybe someone will notice me and help in the exchange. Oh. You're beginning to think logically. Why do we need it? Do you? Yes. I do not know this. What do you think? Help for prisoners of war. Sounds kind of stupid, no? Yes, silly. What prisoners of war? Why should I help you? I don't know why you need it. Let's think. So that your guys could be exchanged for our guys. That's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal of all this activity is exchange, that's right. But how does this video of you help us make the exchange? How does this interview help our military do a POW exchange? Maybe I'll be noticed by someone in my management and they'll facilitate an exchange. Yes, more ideas? It's hard to answer. Because maybe you have powerful relatives who will start calling someone? They'll say you need to be exchanged immediately. Do you have powerful relatives? No. Everyone is normal. My parents are retired. My wife is on maternity leave. What happened in the 14th year? There has been a coup. What happened? I wasn't involved in that. I was just standing on the sidelines, watching, graduating from the institute. I stayed home for a while. Tried to find a job in my profession, but all industry stopped. My brother was in Moscow at the time, and he invited me to work at a construction site as an electrician. I worked there as an electrician until the 18th year. Then start with the 24th of February. I woke up on the 24th of February. It's okay. Everything is fine. At 11 in the morning the foreman called and said, Sergey. You're not going to the night shift today. You're going to the military enlistment office. Yes. I asked him what was waiting for me there, and he said it was no big deal. Two weeks on the range, a break from my family and some money. And if you refuse, it will be from three years of criminal liability. And, of course, we'll fire you from your job, too. Yes, it's hard to work. Impossible. Yes. I went to the military registration and enlistment office and saw everything. We went in, and they wouldn't let us out. They didn't let you out? That's how it was, went in and didn't go out. And that's it. Once you're inside, you can't get back out, there are people with machine guns. What happened next? Disbanding by units. I was waiting for my name to be called, then I was taken to the other side of the military registration and enlistment office and there we stood for about a day. They just gathered a very large number of people there, just a very large number. 
There were people from many regions of Luhansk Oblast. There were people from Krasnodon and Sverdlovsk. Very many. People from the cities of Bryansk, Karosk, Pervomysk, Perevalsh, Zorinsk. What do you mean it's been a day? We just stood there for 24 hours and waited for our name to be called. I understand that they were forming us by units, by battalions, by regiments. Yes. After disbanding, we were taken to a dispensary in Alkesk. There were fewer of us. Were you treated there? No, it was rather something in the role of such a local. Just a building. Hello, is there any way to contact him or find out any information? I would be very grateful. Yes, now you can. Talk to him. Go on, it's the 14th of March. On March 13th, we left Valuk for Izium. We didn't know where we were going or what we were doing. Nobody informed us, nobody told us anything. There was a deadly silence. First there was the village of Glinskoy before Izium. Some farms, something incomprehensible. We stayed there for about three days, and then the companies started to leave. Well, we are with the commanders, like a convoy, the last. Logistics. Yes, they went to Izium, too. On the 16th of March we drove into Izium. There began their daily work, to prepare food, feed the soldiers, and distribute food to the military at the checkpoints. How was the evacuation? The evacuation was somehow, you know, incomprehensible. Unprepared and unexpected. We were told. That's it, get ready. Hurry up. Then the column was lined up and in the middle of the night we all went. Not only us, the Russians also went, and our other regiments went, that is, the 202nd Regiment, other battalions also went. We all went, thinking that we were going home and that we would not be forced to fight anymore. They didn't tell you what was going on? They said we were surrounded. And that's why the evacuation. Were there wounded and killed? Yes. Before the evacuation? Yes. A lot of? A lot, but I can't say for sure. And you don't have two? Five people? More probably. There were shell hits HIMARS in the compound, four dead in one night, and about 17 wounded. Is that where you lived? Yes. Were you shot at? There used to be a lot of hits from HIMARS. Exactly HIMARS hits? Everyone said so, and the management too. You weren't injured? There was a minor concussion, but not a serious one. After we were formed, we left for Laskatovka on September 20th. We numbered about 60 people. That's it. The rest either ran away or something else. That is, run away, unauthorized abandonment. Well, people just disappeared. Did they run away? They ran, yes. A lot? A lot of. How many? More than a hundred, I think. Wow. It's a lot. A third of the battalion ran away? Yes, probably like that. If we take away the wounded and the dead? We had about 60 people left on September 25. Is that from the battalion that was formed only 60 men left? Yes. And the rest? The rest either ran away, transferred, went to Russia, is in the hospital, or is in hiding. Everyone has a different reason. You were well motivated to fight. Not at all. Why? Because they knew perfectly well that I would be found through businesses. There was no way I could go to Russia. I had a young daughter and a child. I was attached to the factory. I have a regular work record, I need it to get a pension later. Do you understand what you are saying now? The truth. I understand it's true. You. Did you fight so that your seniority would not be interrupted? I fought because they told us. 90 days and they'll let us go, then 158 days and they'll let us go, then something else, and so on and so forth. Once again, that you were deceived is known and understandable.
Once again, you fought, you could have been killed, and you were taken prisoner. And your motive for not doing anything was that you would be kicked out of your job and your seniority would be ruined. Well, yeah, that sounds silly. If you get killed, why do you need the seniority? Not at all. We were also threatened with desertion. Desertion affects the family. Children would not be taken to kindergarten, to school either. That's what we were told. You will be killed. What will the wife say? What will your wife say to your child, your daughter, Pauline yes? Yes. What does she say then? Let's try to figure it out. Killed in the war. Killed in the war. For what? I don't understand why. Why are you starting all this? Why did you have to storm that SSU building? Why would they take up arms in the 14th year? What difference does it make what they wanted to change? If we had stayed in Ukraine, so what? Nobody would have forced us to speak Ukrainian. Yes, we have always done our documentation in Ukrainian. What is the problem? Did you have a language problem? With Ukrainian? No, never. You can tell them that, they go to defend the Russian language, and so do you. I don't know why this all happened. Tell me, was there a problem with the infringement of the Russian language? I'll tell you that until the 14th year I did all the paperwork in Ukrainian, and we communicated in Russian. And there were no problems. Were you forced? I went to Zaporozhye for an internship, we spoke Russian, no one looked at us disapprovingly, speak as you like. There was no such thing. Where are you from? From Donbass, from Yenikievo and Alkesk. We spoke Russian with the locals, we got on well, no problems. In the twelfth year I went for the last time. What language do they speak to you in captivity? In Russian. Since you were taken prisoner, how much Ukrainian has been spoken to you? The guys spoke Ukrainian and spoke Russian. Don't you understand the reason? I do not understand the meaning of this since the 14th year, why? I don't understand why people took up arms, why that storming of the SSU and so on. Shall I tell you? It's just some suggestion. Shall I tell you? I'm interested to hear. Maybe we'll see the truth. Because you're czar. This is the 14th year. Yes, who is your czar? Well, Putin. Unlike the Russians, he is not afraid to speak. This can be seen easily, he says what he thinks, because orcs, as a rule, they will evade the answer, you know the name yourself. He's the president. I'll be scolded by Igor at this point if I talk in foul language, so I'll stop. Yes, your czar wanted to add territory to himself. I don't know, I guess. Probably not enough, decided to collect land in Ukraine. And why does he exterminate the male population of Donbass? That's it, then what is extermination? Well, uses us like meat. Take the current situation. The mobilization of all kinds of people is what happened, as we see it now. Anybody. Sick people, temple workers, minors, teachers, it doesn't matter who. One eye, no fingers on the hand. All the same fit to serve in the army. Yes. And go where? To the slaughter? Yes. You leave. You say it's impossible there. No. Go back. You leave. Wounded and dead. You come. They tell you, no, go back. And so indefinitely, until we all die there? What's the point? What's the point? What does your wife say about this? What does she say? I don't know what she says, she cries. What to do? I don't know what to do. I say either prison or exchange. I don't know what to do. When I came back, the guys said that when they came back all the prisoners and the sick were taken back and sent back to their positions, to the first line. Is that what they say? 
That's how it is with us. So when I asked my wife, what about the prisoners? And she says, they take them all back. Or running somewhere, or hiding. No point in the exchange? I don't know where the point is at all. It's warm and they feed you. Yes. And they don't shoot, and it's warm and they feed you. Here's the question. Some kind of stalemate. What to do? I just don't know what to do from all this. Let's get back to your story. Where did you go from Kharkiv region? They took us from Kharkiv Oblast first to the border, through Svatovo and Troitskoy to the border with Russia, to turn in our weapons. But they wouldn't even let us through the border. Why? I don't know. We were not allowed on Russian territory. This is your homeland, isn't it? You're not asking me a question. I do not know anything. They stood there and said so. The border guards didn't allow it. Were there many of you? There were a lot of us going there. Our battalion, and others as well. A lot. 200 people? 4th Battalion. 1st Battalion. There was a lot there. You have arrived. The whole convoy came and stopped at the border, then everyone turned around and left. We drove through Kremina to Lysychansk. Then we refused to go, in Kremina we all got out. Only the leadership and commanders remained. Who said no? Remains of the battalion. Why? 80, 86 people. We stayed in Kremina with weapons and did not go further, to Lysychansk. We were told to take a position at the glass factory. We didn't want to, we wanted to go home, because we were promised that they would take us to Alkesk. We stayed in Kremina. We were there for 24 hours, the Ural trucks came, and we drove the two Ural trucks home and turned in our weapons. They gave us a break, three, four days. You came home. Three, four days, on the phone all the time coming and calling, constantly monitoring. And then, on September 20th, we packed up and left for Laskatovka. We served there. It was quiet and peaceful in Laskatovka. How much money did you get paid for this? I don't even know. At first they paid 76, 600, until September, and then 176,000. Yeah, well, that's fine. What else? We arrived in Laskatovka, took positions there, dug 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 dugouts. And we lived in those dugouts. And when the movement started, on January 12th, the guys from Volchi Yar told us to evacuate. So until the 12th of January, in fact. In general, everything was calm and good, I did not even see much of the war, until January 12th. Then they told us that our battalion was being disbanded and we had to give our weapons back. At the same moment they loaded us into cars, 68 people, I think. And takes us to Novodruzhesk, in three cars. We stayed there one night. And we were sent to Shepilovka. And there's Belogorovka, something like that. Yes, I know Belogorovka. And that's where we were all sent, straight to the position. On January 14th we were already at the position, the heart, there's a position there. We came in, started to dig in, and at 8 in the morning they started to cover us with fire. They shelled us until half past 2, we were wounded and killed, we ran away at half past 2 and retreated. At night, they sent us back. They shelled us again, and we retreated again. And then that was it. We didn't go in the evening. We were told. Pack up. Go for two, three days, again to this heartland, with rations and other things. With water and shovels. And we went. Eight of us. Did you refuse? We refused. They said they would shoot us. They said straight out. If you don't go, we'll shoot you. And there we went, eight of us. Eight of the scouts, and there were five of the scouts and two of ours from the day. 
We went in there from 6 to 12. They wouldn't let us run 400 meters there. They just covered us with fire, and when the last ones came in, it was 12 at night, massive mortar fire started. Here it is, near the wooded area, and here the heart, here we were based. And then they started shelling, on the left side of the wooded area. And it turns out while I was looking for my place to dig, a mine fell behind me, three, four meters away from me, I was concussed at once, I ran to find a trench. We were there, at least to find a shallow trench. I see. I ran and found a trench. And fell into it. The mortar was still firing chaotically there, and then it started hitting exactly where I was lying, aiming. One, two, that's it. Every crevice was leaking what could be leaking. I knew that the third one would get in here, we had to run away. The mortar sprinkles on the edge, you have to get closer there. And I ran, through bushes, the floor, fell down, I had lost the submachine gun somewhere. I was in a panic, my head was not thinking straight. I retreated, fell under a tree, and I think I need to go to zero. As long as there's a lull, I'll go to zero. Or to the well, there to rest in a quiet place. To the well, there we have wells at the entrance, to the field. And back I go. And that's how it happened so I thought it was on the right, but I got disoriented, and I took the right side and went further and further, then wandered through those fields for a long time. I went to a wooded area, I shouted, Moscow, they're shooting. I went to another one and shouted, Moscow, they're shooting. I lay down in the funnel, AGL starts to work. I run back to the wooded area, into another funnel, AGL shoots at me. I hear the sound of a walkie-talkie, it sounds like ours, I think, thank God, they're shouting to me, Moscow, I'm shouting Voronezh. They come up to me, I already realized that everything is over. They just played you. I'm already like this, without a machine gun, what was I supposed to do? That's how I got captured. That's the whole story. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Dimitri, I am a journalist. Your husband is a prisoner, will you talk to him? Yes. The conversation will be recorded and published. Yes, I agree. Don't tell me where you are. Talk. Take the phone, it's not like I'm holding it. Hello. How are you? It's okay. I'm alive and well, I'm fine. How about you? How are you? I feel bad. What do you know about our people, are they all down or not? They're looking for everybody, I don't know. Are they looking? No, we haven't been told about the bodies, nothing. What else, have you been to see someone? Or haven't you said anything yet? I passed it on, yes. I went to Luhansk, I negotiated the exchange of prisoners, I went everywhere. What does Yarama say? He's not there. You mean Dennis? Yes. He doesn't say anything, we don't belong to them anymore, also everyone is looking there and can't find anyone. Sarisa, tell me how are the conditions there? Fine. Did you eat today? I ate today, they feed me twice a day, everything is good, there's tea and TV. Shower. They don't shoot, it's already good. Before your captivity, when was the last time you ate hot food? They gave me borscht yesterday. Before captivity. Before the captivity I don't know when I ate hot food, probably on the 10th. That's the way it is. Albina, don't worry, I'm doing fine, bye. Can I ask you a question? Now a journalist will ask you a question. Good afternoon again, can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. What do people say there? 
People say that everyone is sent to war indiscriminately. I don't even know anymore. Are there still people left? There are still people. It turns out that many were sent back in February. There are people, there are people. There is still meat that will go to die. Maybe now everything will end and will be again, I don't know. And when is the victory? I don't know. When is the victory? How should I know? We didn't go to war ourselves voluntarily, they come to pick everyone up from home or work. We don't need a war. No need for war. You don't support it? Of course not. I want a husband. We have kids sitting here too. I want to live normally, not just like this, for a whole year. I see. Now you can say goodbye. Bye. Love you. I love you, too. Why are you crying? He is alive and well. Goodbye. Thank you very much for calling. Goodbye. Did your friends die? A lot of. A lot of? The same mobilized people came to the factory where we worked and they took us away. It's a strategic plant, and who works? As you can see, they don't care. A certain number of summonses are sent and the shop is obliged to provide several people from each brigade. Once they sent the subpoenas, the second time, the third time, the fifth time. Once they gave it to them and they realized that they could get human resources from there, they just keep going. According to tradition, our prisoners of war appeal to their own with a call whether it is worth going to war. After what you told me, I realized that you were thrown like meat. Yes. You can turn to your fellow countrymen. Countrymen and mobilize. Volunteers, don't come here, you are being used as a human resource. They won't ask, they won't tell, they won't explain, they just tell you to go, and there are mortars working around the clock. God forbid they bring the corpse home, or they'll dig it up and rot in the field. You shouldn't do that. Will they win? That's no way to win. Throwing away people's lives, that's no victory. No one needs such a victory. Who fights better? Who? I don't know who. War is scary. Whoever fights better wins. Whoever fights better wins.